Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org with a video tutorial for the new Boston. In this video, we're going to be creating a plugin and we're going to be creating a plugin which counts down a particular amount of days, hours, minutes, and seconds to a specified date. So inside of our plugin, we're going to be giving the option, uh, it, which is a string, a, a date string, which will then be converted to a timestamp and will perform some calculations based on this timestamp. We'll find out the difference between the date now and the date that we want to count down to and then we'll update these divs here. Now I'm going to go through first of all the way that the plugin works then we're going to open up my browser and have a look at uh, how this actually looks and then obviously in the second part of the tutorial when we actually have demonstrated this we'll go ahead and write the code. So the first thing you'll notice that I've, is that I have a div called countdown. Uh, this can be called absolutely anything and can actually be you know any element at all. Um, as long as we obviously reference this when we uh, use the plugin, make use of the plugin. I've also got four span tags here uh, with different classes which are days, hours, minutes and seconds and as long as the class of any particular element this could be these could even be divs inside here as long as they're called days hours minutes and seconds then um, we can use the plugin and apply the plugin to this countdown div uh, which will update days hours minutes and seconds now by default I've got these set to double zero so if you were to just create this on a page you would have zero zero days zero zero hours zero zero minutes and zero zero seconds so let's just take a look at what I've included on my page um, I've got obviously jQuery here jQuery.js the latest version of jQuery I've got countdown.jQuery.js which is this file here which is my countdown plugin and I've got ext.js which is where we call the plugin from so inside ext.js you see that we've got document ready and then we apply this countdown plugin to this countdown div that we're currently selecting. Uh, we specify a date and then we have a callback function here that runs this line of code when the countdown has finished, i.e. when uh, it's you know started at a particular date, uh, this here for example, and then reaches you know zero or reaches the current time and date specified here. Uh, then we just change this div to we're live. So in my browser at the moment, uh, I'm going to just show you, we've got this set as to 10th of August 2011 at 10.44. Uh, inside my browser, you can see that we've got one day, 19 hours, 13 minutes and 24 seconds. And you can actually see that this value is uh, decrementing by one every second, obviously, because we're counting down seconds. And just as you notice it come to uh, one, then it will go to zero. Uh, obviously, the minutes will then decrease to 12 minutes. So this will uh, sort of, you know, sort of loop on. So if we watch it now, uh, get down to zero, you can see that that's changed to 12, and obviously that that's back to 59. So we're going to be creating this functionality uh, inside of this countdown plugin, uh, and we're going to be giving the option to specify a date in string format and then obviously using this callback function. So at the moment we are on the 8th of August 2011 and the time is 1531. So if I go ahead and change this to 1533 for example, or 15, yeah 1533, uh, you can see that we've got one minute and 30 seconds left. So if we leave this to run, in fact let's change it quickly to 32, Okay, so we've got 21 seconds left now. Uh, no minutes, no hours, and no days. When this reaches the end, this callback function here will be initiated and this line will be run. Uh, so you'll see the effect of this. So really, we're, we're, used, we're creating this plugin, but then putting it into practice as well. So let's just wait for this countdown to reach zero. One zero and you see that it's changed to we're live so we've uh, we've used the plugin in this sense however when we go ahead and refresh obviously it just stays at we're live because um, the callback function is when this date has reached or is you know smaller than or equal to the uh, current date okay so um, let's go ahead and obviously uh, blank all my pages so we can start to write this. I obviously haven't shown inside countdown.jQuery.js but we'll be looking at that in just a moment and creating all that. So uh, I'll go ahead and blank everything and we'll start from scratch. Okay so you can see that I've got rid of the div here 
Uh, let's go ahead and create the div and then inside ext.js I'll explain about how we're doing this and what we're doing. So I'm going to say div id is equal to countdown and end that there. And inside here I'm going to create some spans that have classes of each element of the uh, time we're counting from. So span there, I'll just say forward slash span. Uh, so this one will be days and we can go ahead and just copy and paste this down. So we've got span class days, uh, then we've obviously got hours, and then minutes, which I'm just going to say mins, and then seconds. So I'm just going to put double zero in each of these. And we can see that in our browser now we've got zero 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 for representation of days, hours, mins, and seconds. Now what's going to happen is jQuery is going to find this. Uh, you know, if we if we use the plugin on Countdown, it will find the element inside with dots days, uh, so class days, hours, minutes, and seconds, and it will change these values. So it's important that you have them inside of a uh, of a span or a div or or something like that, a paragraph, anything. So I'll just go ahead and do this. So days, uh, hours, minutes, and seconds, and then that looks something like this. So we've got not days, not hours, not minutes, and not seconds.